Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to write Task 2 Opinion Essays. Here's what we'll be covering. Three common mistakes, the essay structure, how to plan, how to write an introduction, how to write main body paragraphs and how to write a conclusion. You'll find in-depth lessons on planning and writing introductions, main body paragraphs and conclusions on the website and in related videos. I've put links to these in the notes below this video. First, let's look at the question itself. The first part of the question will be a statement. You'll then be asked to give your own opinion about the statement. Here is some typical wording that might be used. What is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? And here's a question from a past test paper. A big salary is much more important than job satisfaction. Do you agree or disagree? Give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. Write at least 250 words. I'll be using this question to guide you through the process of planning and writing an opinion essay. Next, I want to quickly give you three common mistakes that students often make. One, not stating an opinion. Two, giving arguments for both views. And three, not supporting your opinion with clear reasons. The most common error is not giving an opinion. The question will clearly state that you must choose one side of the argument. If you fail to do this, you'll get a low score for task achievement. It doesn't matter which side of the argument you take, or even that you agree with it. Choose the one you can develop the best argument for. And make sure that you don't change your mind part way through the essay. And don't give reasons for the opposing view. Now let's look at a simple structure you can use to write opinion essays. It's not the only possible structure, but it's the one that I recommend because it's easy to learn and will enable you to quickly plan and write a high-level essay. This structure will give us a well-balanced essay with four paragraphs. We now need some ideas to add to the structure and we'll have everything we need for the essay. Pause the video and spend a few moments studying it. Next we come to the planning stage. There are four reasons to plan your essay before you start writing. First, it saves you time. It also ensures that you fully answer the question. It leads to a better essay structure and results in fewer grammatical errors. Many students are reluctant to spend valuable time planning their essay, but it only takes around five minutes and will save you time in the long run. If you do plan your essay before you start writing, you'll already know what you're going to say and you won't need to keep stopping to think about the next idea. This means that you'll be able to write much faster than if you don't have a plan. Planning also ensures that you analyse the question properly and answer all parts fully, which leads to a good score for task achievement, which contributes 25% of the marks. Another 25% of marks are awarded for cohesion and coherence, which relate to the structure of your essay and the organisation of your ideas into a logical order. You can have the best ideas in the world, but unless you can develop them into a well-structured essay, you will not score highly for cohesion and coherence. Without a plan, this is difficult to achieve. So spend a few minutes planning your essay and it will give you an easy to follow map, taking you right through from your introduction to your conclusion. The result will be a well-structured essay and a very happy examiner. With your ideas and essay structure planned out before you start writing, you'll also have more time to focus on getting your grammar right. Fewer grammatical errors means more marks. You should also be left with enough time to check your essay for mistakes and to correct them. So now that you understand why you must plan your Task 2 essay, we're going to look at how to plan it. There are three important things to do in the planning stage. Decide on your opinion, generate ideas and choose some vocabulary to use. Normally, 
you'd begin by analysing the question. But the one we're going to use today is quite straightforward and easy to understand, so we don't need to spend time analysing it. So the first task is to decide on your opinion. Here's the question again. A big salary is much more important than job satisfaction. Do you agree or disagree? For this essay, I'm going to agree with the statement and argue that job satisfaction is more important than a big salary. The second task is to generate some ideas to write about. Since I'm going to argue that job satisfaction is more important than a large salary, I need some ideas to support this view. There are several different ways to think up ideas. I cover them fully on the web page and in the video on task 2 essay planning that I mentioned earlier. For this particular question, I immediately thought of a couple of examples of situations where job satisfaction did prove to be more important than a high salary. So I'm going to use the examples method of generating ideas. Once you've thought of an example or two, ideas to include in your essay should come to you easily. Here are my examples and some ideas they generated. Both the examples are partly true, but I've adapted them to better fit the essay. It's fine to do this as the examiner won't check your facts. Pause the video and read through the examples and ideas. I've got more ideas here than I need, so I'm going to pick two to develop in the essay one for each of the main body paragraphs. For idea one I choose high salary jobs are generally more stressful and can lead to ill health and for idea two I choose job satisfaction gives a sense of fulfilment. We're almost ready to start writing our essay but first we've one more small task to do. In an IELTS essay it's important to be able to say the same thing in different ways either by paraphrasing and or using synonyms. During the planning stage, quickly jot down a few synonyms of key words that you could use. This will save you having to stop and think of the right language while you're writing. For example, for satisfaction we could use fulfilment, achievement, sense of accomplishment, content or sense of well-being. For salary, Income, wages, pay or earnings. For important, significant, valued or has more meaning. And for job, we could use work, employment or position. With that done, we can focus on the first paragraph of the essay, the introduction. A good introduction has a simple three-part structure. Paraphrased question, thesis statement and outline statement. And it should have two to three sentences, be 40 to 60 words long, and take five minutes to write. Start your introduction by paraphrasing the statement sentence of the question. Here's a statement. A big salary is much more important than job satisfaction. And this is one way you could paraphrase it, that is, say the same thing in a different way. It is argued that earning lots of money has more significance to people than being content in their work. Note how I've used some of the synonyms I listed, although it's fine to repeat one or two words if you need to. Above all, your language must sound natural. Next, the thesis statement. The thesis statement is where you state your opinion. For example, this essay totally agrees with that statement. That's all you need to say. But if you decide to agree with the statement, you could write, This essay completely agrees with that statement. Finally, in the introduction, we have the outline statement, where you outline the two main points that you'll cover in the rest of the essay. These are ideas in one and two that I chose earlier. Do it in one sentence, or you can add them on to the end of the thesis statement if appropriate. Here's one way we could write the outline statement. I believe that people are increasingly concerned about the risk of stress-related ill health frequently experienced by people in highly paid positions and they care more about feeling fulfilled at work. So let's bring the three elements of our introduction together. 
It is argued that earning lots of money has more significance to people than being content in their work. This essay totally disagrees with that statement. I believe that people are increasingly concerned about the risk of stress-related ill health, frequently experienced by people in highly paid positions, and they care more about feeling fulfilled at work. This introduction achieves three important functions. It shows the examiner that you understand the question. It acts as a guide to the examiner as to what your essay is about. And it also helps you to keep focused and on track as you write. The two ideas in your introduction will become your two main body paragraphs. In main body paragraph one, we'll write about concerns about the risk of stress-related ill health. And main body paragraph two will be about a sense of fulfilment at work. The structure of a good main body paragraph has three parts, a topic sentence, an explanation and an example. If you can't think of an example, you can add further supporting ideas, but we already have our two examples, so that's not an issue here. A common problem when writing main body paragraphs is having too many ideas. Again, we've already chosen those two ideas that we're going to develop, so we're all set to start writing. You can see how important the planning stage is and how it actually makes writing the essay far quicker and easier. The topic sentence summarises the main idea of the paragraph. That's all it needs to do, so it doesn't have to be complicated. It plays an important role in ensuring that your ideas flow logically from one to another. It does this by acting as a signpost for what's to come next, that is, what the paragraph will be about. If you maintain a clear development of ideas throughout your essay, you'll get high marks for task achievement and cohesion and coherence. We'll now take the idea for our first main body paragraph and create our topic sentence. The main idea one is concerns about the risk of stress-related ill health. Here's the idea summarised into a topic sentence. Employees earning a large income are generally under significant mental and emotional pressure to perform well and achieve targets. Pause the video any time you want a minute or two to study how I've constructed the sentences we're creating. Next, we must write an explanation sentence. This explains to the examiner what we mean. It expands on our first idea. Here's one way we could write it. This causes many individuals to suffer high levels of stress, which can result in both mental and physical health problems. Finally, we add an example to support our main point. I thought of this in the planning stage, so I have it ready to use. If you can't think of a real example, it's fine to make one up, as long as it's believable. The examiner isn't going to check your facts. This is my example. This happened to my uncle. He used to boast about his huge salary, but the boss kept increasing his sales targets and in the end the stress became too great and he had a nervous breakdown. Now he regrets being driven by the money. That's the three parts of our first main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. I've colour coded it to highlight them. Pause the video and read the paragraph so that you can hear how the three parts flow from one to another. We'll now follow the same process for our second main body paragraph. The main idea for main body paragraph two is that job satisfaction gives a sense of fulfillment. And here's this idea summarized as a topic sentence. Having a job that they enjoy doing and in which they feel valued is a major concern for most of the modern workforce. Next comes the explanation sentence to expand the idea and explain what we mean. Here's one way we could write it. A significant number of people are giving up well-paid positions to do jobs which pay less but that they find more enjoyable and less stressful. Finally, our example to support the main point. As before, I thought of this in the planning stage, so just need to form it into a couple of sentences. As I've already said, 
You can make up an example if you need to. Here it is. I am an example of this myself. A year ago, I left the teaching profession because the workload had become too great and I am now a gardener. I feel really fulfilled in this work and am much more relaxed and happy even though I earn far less money. That's the three parts of the second main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. Pause the video again and read through it. Now we just need a conclusion and our essay is done. Conclusions to opinion essays should do two things. They should summarise the main points and state your opinion. This can generally be done in a single sentence. If you're below the minimum 250 words after you've written your conclusion, you can add an additional prediction or recommendation statement. Our essay currently has 233 words, so we're on target and don't need this extra sentence. But you can learn more about how to write a prediction or recommendation statement on my webpage about task 2 conclusions and in the related video. I put a link to them in the notes below this video. The conclusion is the easiest sentence in the essay to write, but one of the most important. A good conclusion will neatly end the essay, link all your ideas together and sum up your argument or opinion. It will also answer the question. If you achieve this, you will improve your score for both task achievement and cohesion and coherence, which together make up 50% of the overall marks. Without a conclusion, you'll score below band 6 for task achievement. You can start almost any final paragraph of a task 2 essay with either the words in conclusion or to conclude. Then all you need to do is briefly summarise the main ideas into one sentence. Here's a top tip. Go back and read the introduction to the essay because this is also a summary of the essay. It outlines what you are going to write about. So, to create a great conclusion, you simply have to paraphrase the introduction. Let's give it a go. It is argued that earning lots of money has more significance to people than being content in their work. This essay totally disagrees with that statement. I believe that people are increasingly concerned about the risk of stress-related ill health, frequently experienced by people in highly paid positions, and they care more about feeling fulfilled at work. And here's the same information formed into a conclusion. In conclusion, for a high percentage of the population, earning a substantial wage is less important than job satisfaction because of the negative effects of work-related stress and the desire to feel happy and fulfilled at work. Pause the video and see if you can match the two main ideas in the two paragraphs. Note how I paraphrase the information and use synonyms. That's it, we've completed our essay. Here it is with the four paragraphs put together. It's on this slide and the next one. I'll leave you to read through the whole essay yourself if you want to. Go through this lesson as many times as you need to in order to fully understand it and then put in lots of practice writing opinion essays from past exam papers. Take your time at first and gradually speed up until you can plan and write an essay of at least 250 words in the 40 minutes allowed in the exam. Practice is the only way to improve your skills. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another lesson soon. Goodbye for now.